Okay, good evening, everyone. I'm gonna call the Marion Township Board of Supervisors meeting for September 2020 to order. The time is now 7.04 p.m. Uh, we are still doing these uh, through Zoom simply because of COVID-19 and uh, the general need to social distance as well as the state level emergency declaration. Uh, under normal circumstances, we do the Pledge of Allegiance at the start of the meeting, but because of the, the nature of the telepresence, uh, we are going to omit that for the time being. So the next item on the agenda would be to approve the minutes for August 27th, 2020 Board of Supervisors meeting. I'll make a motion to approve. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay. Next is to approve the minutes of the September 19th, 2020 workshop meeting. I'll motion to approve. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Next is to approve the payment of bills for September 2020. I'll motion to approve. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay, at this time we'll open up the floor for public comments. Sue, did we receive any email or, or voicemail comments? There were no emails, no telephone calls. Okay. If anybody who is actively on the call, if you want to do the uh, raise hand or give me a sign on the video, I'll... Okay, looks like Dan would like to speak, so I'm going to ask Dan to unmute. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, Dan. How are you? Good. Peter, where do we stand with the property uh, maintenance uh, letters that were sent out to, from craft code they're still actively in play and uh there was a couple of emails circulating to bring jim up to speed since he was kind of unaware of the, the current situation uh, there are a couple of problematic properties that are under notice presently and craft is working with them uh, the progress may not be as fast as everybody likes but uh, what we were trying to get uh, out of those wasn't necessarily beating somebody over the head with getting it fixed in a way that might be an undue hardship, but just getting it fixed and having marked progress. Um, I know there is one property in particular that frequently gets brought up, and uh, that particular property is under a notice right now, and I think they've had a, a slight leniency lately because of some health issues for the property owner. Uh, okay. So uh, it is something that we are acutely aware of, and craft is aware of as well. And if there's a, a situation where we, the board, uh, feel that it's starting to either stagnate or backslide, our next step would be to re-engage with Kraft and ask them to go a little heavier handed on their enforcement of the of the situation as is. Yeah, I mean, I've noticed that some of the property owners definitely pitched in and cleaned things up. But, uh, there's still a couple that are outstanding to be taken care of. Yes, and that's that's something that we are in contact with Kraft. Uh, one of the, the gentlemen from Kraft stops through, so you'd say, well, like, maybe once once a week or so? Um, no, times? probably once a month. Once a month? Okay. Mm -hmm. um, either way, we do have email correspondence with them and phone correspondence, too, on, on other things as well. But if we, if we have a situation, uh, and if you want to bring it up in this forum, you can, or if you'd like to email the township, if you want to err on the side of discretion, by all means, feel free. We'll take any any comment or concern, and we'll deal with it in kind. Understood exactly what you're saying. Thank you. Okay. Okay, I don't see anybody else making a sign or, or gesture or anything like that to, to speak. So at this time, we will move into the agenda items. The first item on the agenda is to reiterate the emergency declaration. We made this back in March with the provision to extend for a period of time lasting until further action by the board. Uh, it was signed on April 1st and we have continued it at previous meetings. And I would suggest until the, the immediate threat of COVID clears and uh, the state order of a, a similar declaration is also not in place that we continue to leave it. 
I'll take silences as agreement on that from, from Jim and Irene. Absolutely. Uh, and, and may I add something to that? Certainly. Um, recently, uh, myself, Peter, and Jim attended a local uh, zoning board meeting, um, the Joint Zoning Board meeting with Rob Sonia. And their room, I would say, is what a little bit larger than what our meeting room is. With positioning people six feet apart, there was just 12 of us in the room. And uh, so if we were to have a full meeting, essentially if it was the four of us plus Jim and Andy, that would allow for six, six people to attend. And I don't think our room is even as large as that particular room was just to accommodate everyone. But another um, issue is we just don't have the materials to clean down the room as well as assure everyone we would have masks, etc. So I would feel very uncomfortable comfortable holding a meeting in person at this time for my own safety as well as the public safety. Being indoors is still one of the largest threats to spreading of this particular disease. Thank you, Irene. Okay, next on the agenda is the Good Sound Company, 38 Main Street. Uh, Mr. Wilmer Good has purchased Reed's Church. Uh, he plans to remove an existing shed and a building, uh, and to build an addition onto the back of the church consisting of office space, storage, restrooms, and a garage. Uh, the congregation will continue to hold their church services there on Sunday for the next four years, and his business will be operating during the week. Uh, in relation to all this, he is requesting two waivers. Uh, the first one is relating to the saldo on Section 3, Subdivision of a Land Development Plan. It's based on the following. Uh, one being project is located on an existing lot of record. No subdivision is proposed. Project proposes a reuse of an existing building, the church. It proposes the use of a low intensity uh, with only two employees. Zoning variance of building setback has already been obtained. The site plan was provided or will be provided to the township for review as part of the building permit. Um, the next one is the stormwater management ordinance. And I'm gonna make sure that Jim is unmuted again. Jim, Jim McCarthy, for the record, because I noticed you stepped away for a second. Peter um, Wilmer Good is also on this call. Yes, uh, I'm going to read everything out and then I'll actually unmute okay. him in case he has a, a comment or concern okay. that he'd like to raise. Um, the uh, next one is the stormwater management ordinance. The project will not increase the overall impervious area. An existing shed will be removed and the existing parking area will be reconfigured to eliminate the impervious area uh, to com compensate for the building. Site plan will be provided as part of the building permit to allow the township engineer to uh, verify the necessary impervious areas. So if you guys uh, got a chance to look that over, it went before planning commission and McCarthy Engineering is actually recommending that we grant both the waivers. Uh, with a couple of stipulations. Uh, one being that the applicant shall submit a site plan for Marion Township to review as part of the building permit. The site plan shall contain sufficient information to ascertain whether the proposed impervious cover will be at or below the existing conditions of the impervious cover. The site plan shall show sufficient elevations and grading to determine that surface water runoff will not be concentrated or increased to any adjoining property. The site plan will contain a calculation for the required number of parking spaces and delineate the location of all proposed parking and loading areas. So based on all of that, I don't have any objections to, to granting the two waiver requests. Jim, Irene, what are your thoughts? Agreed. Yeah, I agree, no objection. Okay. Well, seeing as we have uh, Mr. Good on, do yeah. you have any questions, sir? No, I'm I'm in agreement with the conditions, and um, I uh, I intend to abide by the conditions. So, uh, thank you very much. Fantastic. I'll make a motion to approve the request for two waivers for Mr. Wilmer Good for Reed's Church. Second. Was there a second? Yeah, Jim. Oh, I'm sorry. It's okay. Okay, roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay, 
Next item on the agenda is the RKL 2019 audit. It has been completed and we have received the final reports. Uh, we will need to make a motion to approve the reports as presented and sign the representation letter. Uh, so Sue was telling me that the, the current letter, I think maybe had a carryover, a little bit of uh, wording around when the Peter Wallace was the uh, chairman and the treasurer. Uh, so she changed it so that it's vice chair and treasurer so that you're able to sign it, Irene. But if there's any, any reason at all that uh, RKO would need to have me sign it, I'm, I'm certainly willing to do that. Um, having looked it over, I think everything is in order and in good standing. So I'm, I'm inclined to make the motion to approve the RKL 2019 audit. Second that. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay. Next item on the agenda is the RKL contract. Uh, this expires at the end of this year. Uh, we have received a proposal back from RKL. Uh, Irene, I know you had contacted a, a couple of other places about similar uh, requests for a proposal. Have any of them returned? Um, I'm waiting for one that I'm pretty sure we should be receiving within the next uh, few weeks. Um, I have to reach out to another local um, agency. Sue and I were talking about there really just aren't that many municipal auditors within Berks County, and I think I just might go over to Lebanon to see if there's any other municipal auditors. This way we have a little bit more of a, a idea over what other places are charging. Okay, very good. So I'd like to have at least three. I, yeah, Not ideally. Four. Yeah. I, I, I always try to have at least three anytime we do anything, even if it's below the, the bidding requirements or like sure. estimate requirements, it's always nice to have a comparison. Okay. I'll reach out with some phone calls this upcoming week. Okay, very good. Next is the pension plan audit. Uh, this was completed by the Department of the Auditor General for the years 2016 through 2019. The final report has been received and there were no findings, adverse finding against Marion Township. Uh, these audits are done in three year intervals. So we more than likely will not have to deal with this again until uh, sometime post 2023. <laughs> which I know is going to make Sue tremendously happy. It was a, a very large undertaking for one simple reason, one simple reason alone. Um, we had a, a bit of a, a hopscotch game going with the pension plan at one point because uh, where we had it, we had to change something in order to cash it out for a, or cash some of it out for a previous secretary. And because of the state that the pension was in at that time, we had to roll it over to somewhere else. And then they shortly thereafter decided that they no longer wanted to be in the business of municipal pensions. So we had to roll it over to yet another company, which made for a, a very lovely paper trail for, for an audit. Um, so I'm, I'm relieved and glad, and I'm, as I'm sure you guys are, about that being done. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Sue. A million yes. times over. With no findings, believe it yes. or not. <laughs> yes, no findings. That's the best you, way you to leave an audit. Have, you must what? have sweet, you must have sweet walked him. <laughs> <laughs> next up is the website uh, we had a conference call with civic cms uh, we are still hoping to go live for the middle of october uh, one of the things that they're actively doing is they're fleshing out the the, the live website uh, structure of files and pages and things like that one of the things that we will need to be doing in the next couple of weeks is providing cms content that we want to have on the, on the website. So uh, if we want to do a, a write-up around meet the supervisors or uh, having a page for professional services and having a link to, to Andy or Jim McCarthy or uh, stuff about the trash service, a, a schedule of things, uh, any resources about what's recyclable and what isn't, ordinances that we want to have available, resolutions, meeting minutes, agendas, financial reports, we're going to need to start getting that packaged up and sent over to Civic CMS so that they can get it put up to, onto the site. Um, so we'll, we'll continue to move through the, the project plan as was outlined, but we're, we're staying on track for the middle of October. Okay. Next is the road crew safety gear. The road crew currently does not have uh, any or enough safety vests uh, or things like sweatshirts or helmets or other gear to indicate that they are actually Marion Township road crew. Uh, we did get some price quotes from a couple of places. And I'll pull up the Excel sheet here. Oh, Peter, you missed the road project. Oh, I missed the road project? I apologize. Yeah. I did skip that. I'm sorry. So the uh, the road project's 2020, which is, I probably just glanced over because I saw road in both of them. 
Um, road projects for 2020, we were looking to get overlay in a couple of bad spots. I'm going to be getting measurements for the areas that were in question over to Jim McCarthy because we we're actually going to lump that into the bid packet. Uh, the window of time for being able to do that kind of road work this year uh, really kind of came and went a lot faster than normal because of the, the COVID related concerns and a lot of people trying to cram road work in last minute. So we're going to hopefully have an even more enticing and even larger bid packet next year. And it may ultimately do us some favors because we'll have uh, stuff lumped together. We'll, we'll see a little bit of an economy of scale of having it all done at once rather than getting one company to do one thing and then another company to do another. Um, and Peter, we're actually, hearing, we're actually hearing from the paving contractors that they're aggressively bidding work this fall, late fall, early winter for 2021. So, uh, so if I get that over to you sooner, we can get that out. Yeah, we could get it out and then just put a, you know, put in it. They have to complete it by whatever date we want next year, whether it's September or October. But um, I talked to a few paving contractors in the last couple of weeks, and they're all chomping at the bit to start filling their 2021 paving projects. And they're they're all saying they're going to be aggressive. <laughs> okay, I will try to get that to you in the next couple of days. Then I, I have the the estimate for Reber and Zerby, but unfortunately, it, it it gives you prices, but it doesn't really give you a lot of much else. So okay. in order to, to outline it in a bid packet, I actually want to go out and get a rough measurement so that we know it's X number of feet on this road at this kind of location. Um, Perfect. A lot, of the, a lot of the bad spots are pretty self-evident, but I don't like to leave things to, to doubt or chance. So, right. Okay. Okay. Uh, Jim, Irene, any questions there? And I think Jim Brooks actually muted himself again, so I need to ask you to unmute again, Jim, if you can to speak. There. Oh, crap. I'm sorry. <laughs> you clicked You clicked unmute and I clicked mute again. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. Good. That's that's better. I almost did it again, too, which would have been almost three Stooges level of a, of a gag. <laughs> um, but, uh, next up is the road crew safety gear. Uh, as I had said, we are, we're kind of lacking in that department presently. Uh, we do have uh, some prices that we got from, uh, was it uh, Irene? Did you get them or did John get them? Uh, yes. Yes. Okay. Sure. Um, so I went to uh, Rapid Response and John went to Whitmer's. Uh, Rapid Response will letter the products for us. Uh, we didn't get anything for Whitmer's as far as um, lettering. Uh, she was kind enough to ask the guys what they would prefer. So we have a short list of that and I actually need to go back and uh, get some new estimates because Butch wants a sleeveless t-shirt and that's important for Butch. So <laughs> I'm going to I'm gonna go back and grab some new uh, numbers so that we can review it by next meeting and hopefully get the guys some of the stuff that they need to have. Okay. Well, what I was actually going to propose is if we know there's a core set of things from rapid response because a lot of the prices came in lower from rapid response. If we want to go ahead and authorize the purchasing of a couple of those things, like the vests and a sweatshirt and maybe some yeah. helmets and things like that. Yeah, vests um, are a definite need. Mm -hmm. um, I think, Sue, you have the list of who would prefer what kind of sweatshirt. Yep, I actually yeah, I have they, it up. They all, they all want zippered sweatshirts with the okay. hood. Um, and nobody wanted parkas or anything more. Okay. So um, that makes it a lot less expensive then. Yeah, yeah. so I actually I figured out based on what Sue had said, and uh, I lumped in a couple extra here and there just so that we have extra sizes like for you or Jim or myself. Um, so if we buy three of the size one, which is I'm assuming like a medium of the vest, six of the size two, which is the larger ones, nine of the sweatshirts with a zipper, uh, we would, and if we got nine of the sweatshirts lettered, that would be six hundred and sixty-five dollars and fifty-two cents, plus whatever tax is. Um, I was also looking around on Amazon for just generic, uh, like sweatsh uh, t-shirts and hats and things like that. Uh, you can get a safety yellow t-shirt with reflective tape built into it for under ten dollars a shirt, mm -hmm. uh, and they come in various sizes ranging from medium to two XL. Mm -hmm. uh, you can also pick up a cheapy pack of vests which would be good for if like the community association is doing an event where they need to have people directing traffic or anything like that uh you can get a 10 pack of vests for 25 dollars. so in addition to the the slightly nicer quality ones that we would get from rapid response it might not be a bad idea to pick up a, a small pack of extras to use in a pinch 
uh, as well as there uh, are well, safety I'll... yellow baseball hats with reflective material sewn in yeah. for under under eight dollars a hat. Yeah, um, absolutely. I'd like to just look at the list again, see what the guys' preferences are and what their sizes are, and then get more of a definite number with the lettering, and then come back to everyone with that. Okay. Um, just as an aside, as far as like name tags, I know we'd briefly like mention that as far as identification. John said there's something at the county level that we could get identification tags that's at no cost to us, I believe. So everyone needs to be tagged in the event that there is a, a major incident, whether it's a hurricane or flooding or whatever. There's a three tag system uh, that everyone gets the three tags. You submit the uh, a tag to the incident commander, et cetera, et cetera, just follows um, those rules. So this way there's an accountability aspect to that. So I'll get more details on that. Make sure I have everyone's name spelled correctly so that we can have proper identification in the event of a major incident. Good. That's fantastic. Thank you. Yeah. Next item on the agenda is the Western Berks Planning Commission. Uh, Irene and Jim and myself were in attendance for that meeting. It was on September 17th at the Robazonia Borough Hall. Uh, they are going to be reviewing it uh, and talking to their respective engineers and uh, we'll be meeting next month, hopefully to further discuss it and ideally get it approved. Um, there were some questions around uh, some of the things that we had added in that were specific to Marion Township that they thought they might wanna actually incorporate in their own respective areas. Uh, one of the ones that they had kind of gotten hung on was the fact that uh, we defined uh, lot sizes for if you have municipal sewer but no public water, that if you're still operating on well. None of the other municipalities have that built in, and uh, a number of the people that were on the planning commission kind of stopped and, and took pause on that, thinking that, hey, maybe we should actually have this. Um, so they, they may be revisiting it and asking that we broaden the scope on that so that it's uh, a little more holistic to everybody in the joint plan. Was it was it a good meeting, Peter? I mean, yeah. you didn't sense any yeah. reluctance to anything as far as them no. objecting in any way. To... No, okay. no, and that's I, I think I explained it moderately well in the sense that we we tried to word it very carefully so that it was only Marion Township. We weren't adversely impacting anybody else or, or superseding any of their stuff. Um, but with that said, if they looked it over, and I think this is the case, if they looked it over and went, "Wow, we should actually maybe consider." doing this or adding this or adopting this we'd have to go through some additional steps it wouldn't be quite as easy as getting it approved right then and there right did, did any of the other municipalities mention anything about doing any other changes for them for instance i heard out of north heidelberg that they're rezoning the former ski slope area more down to some sort of residential mix they i didn't know what that came yeah, they were talking about it, but the, the representative from North Heidelberg really kind of made it out that they're really not sure what they're doing with it yet, and they're not sure of the timetable on it. Um, okay. So, I mean, if they, can, if they can get that in at the same time, that would be advantageous for them, but they may, they may not be ready to do that yet. Gotcha. Okay. Okay, next item on the agenda is the statewide tax recovery exemption request. Uh, we've received a request for exemption for a per capita tax for 2009 and 2010 for a Richard Arbogast, uh, who is now deceased. Um, anytime this usually comes up, uh, in the past this has been granted simply because uh, generally deceased people don't have to pay per capita tax. Um, so I, I would make a motion to approve the exemption request for Richard Arbogast for the per capita tax for 2009 and 2010. Second that. We'll call Peter. Hi. Irene. Hi. Jim. Hi. Next is uh, another statewide tax recovery exemption request, also for per capita for the years 2013 and 2014 for a Stephen Dunlap, now deceased. Uh, I'm going to motion to approve under the, the same grounds as the other one. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay. Next item on the agenda is the notice of the estimated liquid fuels and turnback allocation for next year. 
Uh, for 2020, we're expecting a amount of $90,841.85. amount is based on the mileage of 20.5 and a, prop, a population of 1,688 for Marion Township. Uh, this is largely what funds the road work year over year. And uh, we'll certainly go a long way once we figure out uh, what we want to do for 2021, in addition to the, the packet that we were talking about earlier, that is like last year and this year's road work. So we should have plenty of, of budget capacity to do work. And as everybody knows, there's no shortage of things that need to be done from a road work standpoint. Okay. Next is the PSATS Unemployment Compensation Group Trust. Uh, we've received a ballot. Uh, to vote for the election of a trustee. There are three PSATs things that we need to vote on. Actually, PSATs and two uh, township health insurance and pension items. Um, we have a choice of two people and we have to pick two. So it's going to be a terribly hard decision. <laughs> um, so um, I'm going to make a motion for the PSATS Unemployment Compensation Group Trust uh, to authorize Sue uh, to authorize. select the, the two candidates that we can vote for and return the ballot. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay, next is the PA Townships Health Insurance Cooperative Trust, also a ballot for the election of a trustee. It's Again, two choices, only two choices, and we have to pick two. So I'll make a motion to uh, authorize Sue to make that vote and return it. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay, next is the uh, PA Municipalities Pension Trust also to elect a trustee. <coughs> this is again, two candidates, you have to select two. So I'll make a motion to authorize Sue to make the selections and return that ballot as well. Second. Roll call, Peter. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Irene. Jim. Aye. Next on the agenda is the resignation of Majority Inspector Poll Worker. Uh, this was Betty Wessner, who has resigned from this position after 40, uh, more than 40 years of service. Uh, just like with the other individual who resigned recently, I think we should send her a thank you letter for the, the many years that she helped us with that particular function. We'll do that. Okay, thank you, Sue. Mm -hmm. Next is the Bethel Marion Township Tulpahawken Open Space Plan. The project has completed. Tulpahawken Township Secretary uh, has asked that we approve the final payment of the bills for that, each one of the municipalities that's involved. Uh, Sue, you said that we did receive a copy of that plan. Yes. On, on a disc and in uh, a physical format. Yeah, there's a hard copy and a disc. Unfortunately, the, the contents of the disk were too large to email. Uh, so I'll have to grab it from the office uh, one of these days in the near future. That way I can get it put up onto the Google Drive. Okay. I'm, I'm okay with what, what it is. It's exactly what it was stated and intended to be. So I'll motion to make the, or to permit the final payment of the, the open space bill. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay, next is the Tulpahawken Township Police Rate. Uh, it will be increasing next year in alignment with what is within the contract. Uh, due to fuel costs, overall maintenance of the vehicles, wage increases, insurance, and the purchase of three body cameras, they will be raising the rate 4%. Uh, which constitutes uh, $2,006.18 uh, as an increase in 2021, uh, going up to $52,160.48 for the year. Uh, the total per month for 2020 is $4,346.71 per month. 
with a annual rate of fifty thousand one hundred and fifty four dollars and thirty cents. Actually, I, I apologize. I think I actually misspoke on that. Let me let me correct that. You got it back. The, the increase yeah. was two thousand. The monthly amount for twenty twenty one is four thousand three hundred and forty six dollars and seventy one cents. Uh, as a comparison, the 2020 rate is the $4,179.50. So relatively minimal increase month over month. And in unfortunate true fashion to just about everything in life, every year things get more expensive. Um, we don't have to take any action. As I said, it's within the, the bounds of the, the current agreement that we have with Tulpa Hawk and police, uh, mostly just for information purposes. Next on the agenda is the National Night Out for 2020. Uh, Tulpa Hawken Township Police and the Bethel Township Police will be holding a National Night Out at the Mount Etna Fire Company grounds on Tuesday, October 6th. Uh, this will run from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. and will feature food, games, and prizes for all to enjoy. Next up, we have received official confirmation from Governor Tom Wolf uh, about John Seleski being appointed as our emergency management coordinator. Uh, so congratulations to John. I'll let him know. <laughs> <laughs> Thank he you. already knows. Um, next is the free shredding event. This is uh, sponsored by Representative Barry Joswiak, Tomskin Vista Bank, and Wiggins Shredding. It will be held on Saturday, October 10th, 2020 from 9 a.m. to noon at Representative Joswiak's district office at the Reading Regional Airport uh, at 2501 Burnville Road, Reading, PA. Uh, people will be allowed to have up to four boxes of papers shredded. Okay. Next item on the agenda is the Berks County Solid Waste Authority Household Hazardous Waste Collection. Uh, this is going to be held on Saturday, October 24th and Sunday, October 25th at the Berks County Agricultural Center from 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. Registration is mandatory. So if you'd like to uh, take anything in there, for hazardous materials or, or chemicals to be recycled, you will need to register. Uh, I will be putting the, the URL in order to do that in the chat on Zoom, as well as once we have the, the video posted to YouTube, it will be located in the, the description of the video as well. Uh, their fall paper shredding for the Berks County Solid Waste Authority Household Hazardous Waste uh, has been canceled due to COVID-19, but they are still doing the chemical collection. Um, as an interesting side note, I'm kind of curious if it's only open to residents or if we as a municipality might be able to take some things out of the garage. There. Did, I hear, did I hear cleaning the garage? I, you certainly did, Irene. Um, <laughs> so we have to see if that's something that's going to be within the scope of being allowed for that particular collection. And if it is, is a prime opportunity to get rid of a lot of that stuff that's no longer being used and just sitting there. Um, Tell me when you're available. <laughs> Give me a call sometime. My, my schedule is uh, busy, to say the <laughs> least, but uh, if we can maybe find time on a weekend or an evening yes. or something like that, we'll, yes. we'll try and coordinate. But yes. um, it's one thing to get everything cleaned and tidy, and then we have to be prepared to address the last hurdle, which is getting rid of a lot of that stuff, because a lot of it is some pretty nasty chemicals. I figured we need at least two weekend days. We should get everyone from road crew out, pull everything out, go through everything, inventory everything, and then put it back in a much more orderly fashion. Absolutely agree. We should catalog everything we have, and uh, if at all possible, especially for things that are, are new enough to have it, having a, an MSDS yes. in the book. Yes. Okay. Next up is the trick-or-treat night for 2020. Uh, as always, we need to set the date and time for trick-or-treating, and we have to advertise it. Last year, we advertised in both the Reading Eagle and the Myerstown Merchandiser. Uh, we did October 31st from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. Uh, Wommelsdorf's is October 31st from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m., rain or shine. Um, my personal opinion is of public gathering holidays, this is probably the safest in light of COVID because it's the only one that actively encourages you to wear a mask. <laughs> Um, I, I'm inclined to make a motion to uh, set our date and time for October 31st, which is on a, a Saturday this year, unless my 
my recollection of the dates is incorrect. Uh, but from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m., just like we did last year. Yes, it is a Saturday. I'll second that motion. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. And just for the record, I advertise it in the community calendar part of the Reading Eagle and the Myerstown Merchandiser, so there's no charge. It's even better. I think my pen just died. Um, next item on the agenda is the Animal Rescue League 2020 contract uh, proposal, I guess would be the best way to put that. Uh, they have sent us a letter uh, detailing some of the services that they have available and the various price points at which it is. Uh, the past couple of years, we have not had a Animal Rescue League contract, uh, but worth noting, we had previously donated $500 annually to the Animal Rescue League. Um, have either of you gotten a, a chance to substantially review the Animal Rescue League proposal? If I'm if correct, not, at I, the end of uh, last year, it was not approved. You so are correct. And it, it was substantially different last year. I, I think would they're, hold off on it. Yeah, I think they're trying to find their footing on uh, keeping a consistent source of funding, which I can't blame them for. Mm -hmm. um, the the problem in lies is a lot of the stuff uh, for the amount that we've have historically used it is almost prohibitively expensive. Mm -hmm. um, what, one of the things they have in there, and there's four principal offerings. The first one is a two dollar per capita comprehensive full, full service contract. With our population the way it is, that would be about I think thirty five hundred dollars between thirty two and five hundred thirty five hundred dollars a year. The second option is a one dollar per capita full service contract. Uh, which would include everything except transporting the animal back and forth. Um, the third option is a 50 cent per capita community cat contract, uh, which the, the plan goes into more details around how they, they would deal with feral cat colonies that, that we might have, uh, as well as a fourth option dealing specifically with emergency hoarding. Uh, and this is a situation where we would pay a one-time retainer and then we would be invoiced for subsequent services. If we didn't have anything, we wouldn't have any additional charges. If we did have something, we would have costs thereafter. Um, I don't know that we have a hard deadline on this necessarily, other than I'm sure they would want to get this back sometime soon or have an answer sometime soon. In the past, we've chosen simply to not acknowledge it because acknowledging it one way or the other would be semi-constituted as acceptance one way or the other. Um, but if you guys haven't gotten a chance to look it over, I would, I would suggest looking it over just so that we can make an informed uh, opinion and discuss potentially at next month's meeting. And I believe they send it out now because it's coming up on preparing the budget time. Uh, absolutely. They want to get you before you've set the budget. And that mm -hmm. was the, the problem they had the first year. Cause I think this is actually the third year that they've done this. Mm -hmm. um, it is too. Yeah. The first year they did it after everybody set the budget. Mm -hmm. I think they, they sent this out in December. And I know I went to a, a meeting over uh, at Albright College or near Albright College. And just about everyone in the room was like, even if we wanted to do this, we already did our budgets. It's not, the money's just simply not there. We don't have it to, to allocate it. It's already all been divvied up. Um, so I think they're, they're trying to learn from prior missteps and give, give it a read over. We may decide to continue our current course, but we may find an option that, that fits well based on the fact that we did previously donate to that, that institution in the past. Okay. Next item on the agenda is the 2020 Volunteer Fire Relief Association Fund. Uh, we received the funds uh, directly deposited by the state. Uh, the total was $12,901.23. Uh, Act 205 requires that we give this to the Marion Fire Company Relief Association. That specifically, Marion Fire Company Relief Association, within 60 days of our receipt. Uh, we also have to complete Form 706B in relation to that. So, Irene, sometime in the, the very near future, the, the next step would be to, to draft a check mm -hmm. and get it sent out. And then you and I can figure out that 706B form. I think it's pretty straightforward. I think it's, yeah. um, if I recall correctly from when the other Peter was doing it, it's 
entirely around the, the volunteer fire relief fund and a couple other things that we have within the, the ledger. Yeah, I haven't seen that deposit. Um, the other thing is, if you look at the letter, it addresses Eileen Height as the, as the treasurer. And I guess, I don't know if it makes much of a difference, but her title needs to be corrected on that, whether it's you know, that's because That's because when I re uh, filled out the municipal statistics up at the beginning of the year, she was treasurer. Gotcha. gotcha. Yeah, so okay. we'll, we'll be making the correction on okay. that one. But uh, from, a, from a compliance and, and funds standpoint, we have yeah. two, two takeaways. We need to get the money in and send the money back out and then yeah. fill out that, that one form. I don't, I don't recall seeing that deposit, though. We just got a, a letter. It wasn't a letter. It was just a notification today that the money was deposited. Okay. So, so um, I, I was in the office, what was it, Tuesday? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's it's entirely possible. That I, I think okay. this was on the workshop meeting agenda as well. It might yeah. have just been pending. Sometimes ACH yeah. transfers take a, a couple of days to clear. Yeah, I look for it. Yeah. Okay. Next so up we is need, the... We need a motion to do that. Oh, okay. Okay, so uh, I'll make a motion to, I guess, pay the uh, Marion Fire Company Relief Association the twelve thousand nine hundred and one dollars and twenty three cents that we received from the Volunteer Fire Relief Association. Second that. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Thank you for the reminder on that, Sue. By the way. Next up is the handicap parking space request. Uh, we have received a request for 120 Main Street for an individual who has a handicap placard to have a space designated as handicap and, and signage and the curb painting done. Um, we don't have an official process around this. Um, Andy and his office was kind enough to send over uh, some, some resolutions in order to adopt that as well as some forms uh, around the uh, the actual requesting of it and the the official policy. Uh, did you guys get a chance to look that over in advance of the meeting? Yes. Okay. I have really no objection with any of it. The only thing that I had was there's uh, a line item about taking a $100 deposit, which is held essentially in perpetuity until the space isn't needed anymore. I'm not real fond of having that there. I don't think that's needed. I'm of the opinion that this is the kind of service that we, as a, a local government, if we have the, the mechanism in place for people to make that request, that's just something that, that we should be doing. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm, I'm inclined to, to adopt the resolution, or suggest that we adopt the resolution uh, with that particular section omitted. I think it was two total sentences. There was one section in the actual form detailing that, and then there was a, a clarifying section. I want to say section A6 that had their, that in there. And the, we did receive two copies. You're right. You're right. Yeah. We, had yeah, two did, we did provide a copy that has that not in it. Okay. So let me actually pull up the, the resolution I think that here. That $100 fee, so to speak, would uh, make the requester feel like there's some ownership in the spot and we just want to keep in mind that it's anyone who has a handicap placard would be entitled to use that spot. Yeah, that's, that's actually a very good point. I was also concerned that if we have even one of these, that's a $100 liability that we're always going to have hanging over us that we would, granted, we're, we're never that lean, but mm -hmm. you still have to potentially be ready to pay that out at, at a moment's notice. Right. So We don't want a resident saying, I paid for that spot because essentially any handicapped spot is available to anyone with the proper tags on their car. Correct. Correct. And then and keep in mind uh, also, um, and I sent this in an email, if it, if it needs to be enforced, the sign has to indicate what the fine potentially is. Mm -hmm. And then if a vehicle would be towed, the sign also has to indicate that it could be towed if parked illegally. I would prefer the sign to have those details. I think you, I think you have to have that, don't yeah. you, Eddie? For it to be enforceable? For it to, uh, yeah, for, for it to be enforceable, yeah, absolutely. Okay. I don't know that our current, I think we have one sign in town. I'm not sure what that sign says. Uh, do we have, do we have no parking? 
I think yeah, we I have. I think we have two. There's apparently there's one across the street, and there's one um, down the street um, from water, east of water. Because I had a gentleman call in the office saying um, the person who had the handicap sign put there no longer lives there. Can the township take it away? And I, I didn't. I thought. I don't know. Okay, that might be something we should. Uh, hold on, I think Kelly is waving. Let me let me ask Kelly to unmute. That would be seventy six Main Street. Probably is, yeah. And they moved. It's a rental, and they moved out. The handicapped person. Take it down. Yeah, I was gonna say that that might be a prime candidate, and we don't. Yeah, uh, take it. Take it down and use it for, for yeah, 120. So we could move it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the only thing we may want to do, because I, I offhandedly, I'm, I'm not familiar with if that sign has any of the, the towing and fine details on it, but that's something we can easily pick up from, from MSI. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm, I'm going to make a motion to adopt uh, the resolution for uh, handicapped parking space policy in Marion Township. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. And Andy, just to confirm, we don't need a, a resolution or anything to adopt the, the actual request form that's considered an administrative item. Yeah, it's, uh, it's actually part of the resolution. Um, and we could change it at any time if we would need to go forward. But now you don't need a specific um, motion on that. Okay. Fantastic. Next item on the agenda is the old furnace. Um, <laughs> we've uh, <laughs> we've uh, we've been on the the new heating system for a little bit now, and the new heating system is working quite well. But the old furnace is still present. So the, the next thing that we need to do is we should get somebody in to completely do the decommissioning of that, that particular unit, uh, getting it disconnected from power, getting it disconnected from water, draining the water lines, and then uh, the takeaway that we wouldn't necessarily need to have anybody else do would be to start taking out some of the, the pipes and radiators and things like that that are present in some of the rooms. Um, the office, the meeting room, the, the room that the AA meets in. Uh, starting to, to work that out so that we only have the, the new heating system present. Um, in the past, uh, I believe we've used Moyer for a lot of the we heating used systems. Ray Moyer, Ray yeah. Moyer. Um, um, he, he didn't seem, he, when Peter Wallace had asked him about dismantling it last year, um, his response was, I'll work it in. Okay. It's well, now a year later. I'll, I'll make some phone calls to some HVAC places and installers in the area and see who, who would be willing to come out and just do that disconnection work. We don't even need them to actually go through and remove the whole thing. That's something that um, it's not a particularly nice unit, uh, which is why we replaced it. Uh, maybe just getting the road crew to get it out as a, an afternoon activity and take it to a scrap metal yard, maybe with some other pipes or, or things that we have out on the lot behind the salt shed and uh, just do it that way. So we, we just need somebody who has the, uh, I guess the professional expertise to, ex uh, to disconnect it from power and disconnect it from water without flooding the basement uh, so that we can- And, we can and the oil it. source too. Oh, that's true, and the oil connection. Yeah. That, is, that is a very valid point. Um, but to do those disconnections in a, a safe and responsible way so that we can move forward with the, the easier aspect of it. So, Do you know how the water is heat the you know the water heater part is that heated by the furnace or is that a separate water heater? I'll be honest, off the top of my head, I don't know. I've never actually seen a, a separate water heater like a, a residential water heater anywhere. Um, <laughs> on that same turn of phrase, I don't Boy. know the last time that I've used hot water in the township building. Well, I I do. Yeah, I know. I know you and, do. And the I cleaning lady does. But... Yeah. Anytime I'm there, it's usually to to use the bathroom to wash my hands or get a drink out of the water fountain. So it's, it's always on the, the colder end of the spectrum. Um, so if for whatever reason that is still 
responsible for, for providing hot water. We'll just have to, at the next meeting, once we've determined that, maybe make a motion to get a water heater installed. So it's a, an easy enough thing to, to, to resolve once we know that we need to do it. It's just making weird noises. <laughs> yeah, uh, we just it, it's not needed. So even if it's making weird noises, it's doing things like using electricity that we mm -hmm. don't have to be using. Mm -hmm. So um, I'll make a motion to authorize the decommissioning of the old furnace. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay, next item on the agenda is uh, a notice of violation that was sent out by McCarthy Engineering. Uh, this was for 1124 Route 419. Uh, Jim, since you are on the call, I'm going to unmute you again. And I'll let you give us the synopsis of that particular. Okay, so we're going out there and uh, Sean had spoken with Glenn and there's an inlet and about 185 feet of pipe that's supposed to be installed. Um, they didn't install that, so we sent him a notice of violation. It was, since it was during the period where the contractors wouldn't work, we gave them uh, 60 days, which took it into the end of July, beginning of August. And it still hasn't been completed. So I guess when Sean was back out there to check on it, Glenn said, I want to wait until I build the last two build, little buildings before I put the pipe in. So the, pad, the pad sites are on grade for the two buildings, but the buildings aren't built, which we don't hold bonding for the building, but we hold bonding for the stormwater improvements. He's gone past the time in the developer's agreement to construct those improvements. So we were hoping he would just build it and it would resolve it and we could out, clear out the letter of credit. Uh, but at, at this point, he hasn't responded to the notice violation. Um, there's a couple options I can think of. Andy might have more. One is, you know, we send another bio, another letter saying, giving him more time. Um, we, the supervisor, just take action to extend the developer's agreement to give him additional time, whether it be, sounds like he's talking about a couple of years because he said, I have five years to build the other two buildings. And that letter of credit would remain open um, or kind of like, the last draconian effort is that we declare them in default of the letter of credit and we have the work done, which is on private property. I really would recommend that option. Yeah, I'd, I'd, I would like to see that as the absolute last. Yeah, sure. I don't, we don't really, I mean, it's on his private, it's not like he built a, a road and, and the storm sewer's not in there and it's affecting lots. You know, it's not a subdivider, it's really creating a problem on his own property by it not being there. Um, it's not impacting any neighbors, but it is a bonded improvement. And in our developer's agreement, we give them 18 months from posting of escrow and signing the agreement to complete all those items. So he would either, we'd either have to extend that or send him another letter if you'd like and give him more time. Or I guess the other option would be, you know, we'd have to go to the DJ. But again, I don't know that we want to get involved in any of that kind of litigation matters. Yeah. My so certainly that would be like the last one. Yeah, you know, I would rather either we give them more time to extend a developer's agreement or we send them another letter giving them, you know, but now, unfortunately, we're in September. So, if, you know, if contractors aren't lined up, you may not be able to get the work done to the print. So but we, in, the meantime, in the meantime, that, that letter of credit's going to renew annually and it's going to cost them money every year. Right. To renew it. Yeah. So it's only really to his benefit to get it done as soon as possible. Right. Yeah, this came up because we were talking with Sue about we have a lot of letters of credit and a lot of them are agricultural type projects that they haven't requested them to be released or they're done 90 percent you know it would be nice to close up all those developers agreement letter credits and just finish up the projects and be done but you know we need a direction from the supervisors how you wanted to handle this what would be a typical extension time um, I mean, you could give them an additional year. You could give them till the, you know, you could, Andy could draft an, an amendment extending it till, you know, August of next year or, or a year from today's meeting, whatever you, whatever you would feel appropriate. I and think then, we can look, we can look at it again this time next year. Right. 
So we're heading into fall. We're heading then subsequently winter. Not too many people doing work during that time. So this would be something like be more of a late winter, early spring type of a project then if I'm correct. Yeah. Um, you will be rise there. <laughs> it's not, I mean, it's, it's yeah. less than, it's probably three days worth of work for a utility okay. contract to set the inlet and put the pipe in. It's only 185 feet of pipe in a catch basin. And it's at his cost, not ours, so. Yes, and he has, he has put um, a letter of credit in place guaranteeing that it will be improved. And then each year, the amount of the letter of credit auto, auto increases by an additional 10%. Yeah, so really, at this point, the only person that he's impacting is himself by waiting. Like you said, the, the only person that the runoff is impacting is, is him. He does, doesn't have any adverse uh, ecological or property damage uh, things for neighbors. And right. the letter of credit that it, you had said is just going to keep costing him more and more money every year. Right, yeah. but we, we monitor the, the expiration date of the letter of credit so that we're not, you know, when 18 months, we usually go out like at 16 months, and say, hey, you only got two more months, let's wrap up all this stuff and close it out or ask for an extension. And Glenn hasn't done any either of that. So we don't really know. That's why normally they come back with, hey, we want to do it in six months, and then we can come back to you and say, can we extend this six months? Mm -hmm. But we've gotten zero response. Other than I just want to wait till I build the buildings and I have five years under the municipal planning code to build the buildings. So we're like, well, okay. Yeah, <laughs> Your agreement expires this year. So you're going to do this. That's true about the buildings, not the pipe. <laughs> right, and, and literally the pipe, the buildings are totally independent of the pipe. You know, it can be done, you know, the pipe's not interfering with the buildings and the buildings aren't interfering with the pipes, so they're not related to one another. And he seems to clearly understand that. Well, I, I mean, Sean, Sean clearly explained it in the field to him mm -hmm. that you know, it needed to be done. And he said, well, I want to, because I have five years. And Sean said, well, your developer's agreement's not five years long for your bonded improvements. I, mean, I don't have any problem with an extension. Like we had discussed, it doesn't adversely um, affect any other adjacent properties. It's only his property, and he just gets to pay more the longer he takes to do this. Right. So. Yeah, I I would go so far as to say that we do it one at one year intervals. Mm -hmm. That way, if we decide to, to to lean on him a little heavier, we we're not locked in for a longer period of time beyond that. Okay. So. Um, I guess the, the next question is: Do we need to motion make a motion to authorize Andy to do that? Yes. Okay. Um, so the specific wording behind that would be to uh, draft an amendment to allow for an additional year. Yeah, I would say extend it to a certain date and you know, maybe make it October first of the next year. Okay. That's like a week away. Okay, so we're extending the time for completion of the. Improvements under the developer's agreement associated with the development plan. Okay, Sue, did you get all that? I will on the recording. <laughs> okay, good. Um, I'll make a motion for that for October 1st of 2021 as the deadline. I'll second that. Oh, you got it, Jim. Thank you. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Next up is uh, 1131 Route 419. Uh, the, the property has a existing crossing pipe that was extended. Uh, so th Jim, this do you want to? Yeah, this is directly across the street from Glen Brookbreaker's property. <laughs> the, so, so both of these are like within 100 feet of one. The pu our pipe went under the road from Glen's side to the drivable side, and I guess. And we were not sure who extended the pipe. Nobody's fessing up that they did it. But the pipe got extended about 50 feet and backfilled. The problem is the pipe that was there is in our right of way. Now, the pipe got extended without any approvals or permits. And who's going to maintain the pipe that got extended that's not ours that is now all private property? Because... 10 years or 20 years or whatever down the road, somebody's going to say, why did the township extend this pipe 50 feet on private property with no right of way or easement? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, and, and you might want to chime in on this, but my concern is one, that people just extended our pipe without any proof. But more long term is who's going to own and maintain that pipe and who's going to be responsible for it now that it's out in private property, not in the public road right away. Well, it should be the property owner. 
and there should be an agreement that they maintain it. So, and it should be recorded against their property or the pipe, you know, that was extended, be unextended. Why was it removed? Place. See, uh, and what would have happened had they come in for a permit to extend that pipe, we would have said put a manhole or an inlet box at the end of our pipe and extend from there, and then you're responsible for the inlet box and the remainder of the pipe, because now we can't really maintain our pipe because we have to go 60 feet onto somebody's private property to get in the pipe. So it's Kind of a weird one. I, I don't know that it's from a stormwater standpoint. I don't believe it's going to create any adverse issue. They extended the same pipe size. It appeared they extended it correctly and used a reputable, it looks like they used a reputable contractor, but nobody's fessing up which of the three property owners on that side extended the pipe or if it was Glenn Brubaker. I doubt Glenn extended the pipe on the other side of the street. That would make no sense. But so one, we have the issue and two, we got to find out who extended it. Okay. Who, who owns the property on which it was extended? So uh, I believe it's jo Joanna. Huh? Is that Joanna? I believe that's Joanna. Joanna's property. There's two, there's three properties right there in tight on the pipe. The way it's situated there. Okay. So it was, ex and she has no knowledge of, of this? We had, we were basically out there when Sean was out there with Glenn. He asked Glenn, and Glenn's like, I don't know. And he walked across the street and he said he talked to a couple of people that were around who didn't identify himself and said, how this pipe get extended? And they all said, we don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I guess the, the, the real question, and the homework for, for Andy is what's our best path forward on that? Should we be getting something recorded against the, the property? Should we be trying to get an easement on it for us being able to, to do maintenance on our existing pipe? Should we be trying to get a combination of the two so that the, 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 the extended portion is still their responsibility, but we have access to it if we need to, to do remedial work? I mean, personally, because they didn't put a structure in there, I would say if they extended it without a permit, we should make them responsible for the whole length of the pipe, including under our road. Because, because we would have required a structure to delineate where where our our maintenance ends and gives us access to maintain our pipe, and we can't do that now. Are, are we allowed to hot potato a, a pipe under a I road to, <laughs> to private I don't owners? know. That's a new question. <laughs> Well, I mean, if this property owner had no knowledge that it was extended, I, 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 I'm kind of drawing a blank as to how we could uh, hold that person responsible for it. Um, well, somebody has make sense. somebody has to know. Well, I mean, if you think about admitted. it, when I look at it from a, from, from a common sense standpoint. Well, if you look at it from a common sense standpoint, if you left to go to work in the morning, you came home and there was a backhoe and pipes sitting in your yard and they put a 60 foot pipe extension, you got to know something about that or you're asking a lot of questions. Correct. So, I mean, she, common she sense like, says that the person who's huh? yeah, she's, she's an She's an elderly individual, so there's a good chance that she was around when they were doing it. Oh, so she's not working you're saying so she was probably home when it went in yeah and, and she probably would have called sue if it wasn't and said why is somebody putting a pipe in my front yard yeah if it wasn't her but i'm not i'm not accusing anyone of putting it in <laughs> does she still live there yes she does that's a she's farm in, right she's that's in her 90s yes she um there are no animals there no i don't believe anybody farms the land but she still lives there She's she in her lives. 90s. Uh, Jim, how close was the pipe to her house? Because that's a pretty, that has a lot of road front is that probably. Ooh, it's, it's pretty close. It, it, it's probably about a, 30 feet from the house or so. Well, she lives I, in that stone house. Somebody else lived in that, someone else lives in that house right along 419. Okay. Well, the house along 419 is probably 30 feet from the pipe. Mm hmm. And then basically the pipe got extended to go from where our pipe ended to pretty much the end of the house. So like they extended it 
So when the pipe discharges, it discharges the water past the house, not before the house. We did get a, um, I don't know what you call it. It was um, a one call. Well, no, when P BCCD goes out and does a dirt disturbance thing, what do you call okay. that? You got uh, that report. Inspection report. Yeah, and I think I thought I emailed it to all of you. I can re-email that. I do actually recall seeing that. I thought that was directly tied to the the thing that McCarthy Engineering sent out. I thought the two were part and parcel, but I do recall seeing that uh, that they weren't, for lack of a better term, they weren't going to throw stones about it because it was done well and it looks like it was stabilized correctly with the, the temporary measures as well as the seating for the ground cover and things like that but i thought the two of them were directly tied together when i was reading through the email so if they're not that's actually remarkably coincidental yes <laughs> so the problem is ownership then maintenance and access yes yes Okay. And then, the, and then the fact of no permits were obtained. How do we handle that so we don't have everyone extending our pipes or under every one of our roads in the township when they feel like it? Andy, <laughs> help. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. That's, that's um, definitely a solicited question. I'm, I'm thinking. Um, I mean, what? I don't know that we need to decide tonight, Andy. Maybe you want to think no, about that think so next month. I don't think so either, but um, some sort of correspondence should go out to, to her, to the property owner, and it should probably say that since it was extended without without any permitting, that you know the township has no responsibility for it, and responsibility falls on her. Now I don't know how much responsibility it is, um, but at the very least, it's whatever is out of our right of way. We can't be responsible for it. Well, I, and actually, now I'm thinking mean, about this more. It's actually, actually, now I'm thinking about this more. It's the PennDOT right away that they sent the pipe out. It's not our yeah, pipe. It's PennDOT. Yeah, because it's 419's the. It's just not even our road. Yeah, it's not our. It's not our road. Not our pipe. It's PennDOT's pipe. That's oh. actually, that's a that's a good point. This might be PennDOT's problem. Well, maybe we let PennDOT know and have them deal with it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We'll tell on our pen dot. Uh, so, do you want me to just send her a letter saying we, we, we know you installed this? It appears you've installed this pipe outside of extended a pen dot pipe onto your property without any permits from the township and co and just, just copy the pen dot maintenance unit and let them do what they want to do. And yeah, this I guy will kind of wash her. I actually, I don't know why I think I mean, it's on 419, it's not our pipe. Yeah, for what it's worth, Jim, I, I frequently forget that we have a couple of roads that aren't aren't ours. I just kind of take that for granted. But it usually comes up when we talk about the mowing or the plowing, and I'm just like, oh, that's right. We do have a couple of state roads that... But, yeah, I was just looking at the thing here, and I saw Route 419. I'm like, wait a minute, that's not our road. <laughs> yeah. So I think that's probably the best course of action, is just do our due diligence on letting her know, but then also let PennDOT know and let, let things... Let them, let them figure it out. Yep, let things naturally take their course. Andy's off the Budweiser hot seat. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's always nice to punt to somebody else. <laughs> okay, uh, next up is the Womelsdorf Sewer Authority letter. Uh, we had brought this up, uh, bare minimum, I think, at the workshop, but uh, John F. Martin is looking to purchase 140 out of the remaining 240 EDUs at the Womelsdorf Sewer Authority which does create an interesting constraint around the plan, the Act 537 plan that we have in presently, uh, simply because we are, uh, in terms of that plan, entirely reliant on the Wilmersdorf Sewer Authority. So uh, after some discussions with Jim McCarthy, this is something that we want to incorporate in the memo that we're sending to the DEP, uh, which would also influence some of the, the potential changes that we would make to the plan. Uh, initially, what jumps out to me is when we go to make any revisions to the plan that we potentially, based on the constraints around the, the Wollmersdorf Sewer Authority, in addition to the, uh, the need and cost components that we wanted to focus heavily on, would be also more prevalently including an option that if we did have a need and we had the, the grant funding to do it, having a secondary option. And I know the, the DEP doesn't prefer to have two treatment plants within close 
shot of each other, but having that in as an option if the capacity does not exist at the Wolmersdorf plant at that time. So uh, largely for awareness, but it is yet another dynamic on top of the Act 537 situation that we need to be aware of and try to be proactive about addressing. Um, so uh, Jim McCarthy, I will be in continued contact with you about getting that memo together. The, the goal is still to be uh, relatively clean and crisp and concise and try to get a little bit of FaceTime, even if it's via telepresence. I know the right. department likes to do Skype stuff, but uh, getting some time with them to sit and discuss and just kind of go over what we're looking to accomplish because we're not, uh, admittedly, we're not trying to go outside of the, the confines of what is prescribed in the regulations. We're looking to, to retool the existing plan so that it fits the, the needs and the situation that exists in Marion Township a little more specifically than, than what the, the current plan does. Yeah, and I think, you know, fortunately or unfortunately, however you want to look at it, this gives us the opportunity to go back to them and say, this something happened outside of our control. And, and we now can't send 180, 70 views to almost door because they only have 100 available. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I think that certainly helps us reopen that dialogue for them to try and do something a little different than the approved plan and and have them looking at it a little differently, hopefully, a little more positively towards the revisions that the supervisor would talk about wanting to propose. We, we can um, confirm these numbers, but I think, I think after Martin would purchase 140, I think there's more than 100 left. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, e even so, even let's hypothetically say there's still, let's, there's 200 still. And we're looking at potentially 187. If, and we're, more than realistically, we're not looking at putting in the sewer in overnight or even any time in the next couple of years based on right. in the existing planning. Um, this could be a situation that more and more of them disappear. And it's a, it's a dynamic that I think should be rightfully so highlighted to the department that we, mm -hmm. if by all other things, best intentions, we go through the exercise of having everybody pump out for the on-lot management ordinance and we find oh, wow, it's really, really bad. We actually do need public sewer, and we're, by some stroke of sheer luck, able to get the kind of grant funding that we would need to make it viable. We don't want to find ourselves in a situation where we go, okay, we need it, we have the funding, we have nowhere to go with it, because Wilmersdorf can no longer accept that capacity. Um, we want to make sure, and, and this has been really the, not to put too fine a point on it, kind of what I've been pushing towards since the very beginning is we need to have a comprehensive plan and not, believe me, Jim McCarthy, nothing against the, the plan. You guys did exactly what you were, you were brought on to do, which was to finish the, the existing plan. Um, no offense it, taken at all. <laughs> yeah. But it, it takes a very, very narrow approach to things. And my, my understanding of the, the plan and at any time, anybody's free to stop me and, and offer correction, but it's to outline the long-term planning for removal of your municipal waste. And right. that can be implemented any number of different ways. And the way we're looking to do it is to outline it for essentially a very long time, 30, 50, whatever amount of time after that, that we say, we'll do these things when we get there. Until that, this is what we're doing in the interim. It's pretty straightforward. And I think that, that complication where we might have a situation where we've kind of put all of our uh, eggs in one basket for the Wilmersdorf Sewer Authority, um, we may have to rethink that just because there are other people other than Marion Township that, that go to Wilmersdorf. And sometimes sure. the demands get higher, sometimes they get lower, but more often than not, you have businesses that come in or additional houses that get built and that capacity gets snapped up very quickly. So, Jim or do Irene, we do, you get those, do, we, do we want to get those numbers <clears throat> from the authority? Um, I, think, I think that if, would be ideal. Assuming not up, yeah. Yeah. I, yeah, I don't, I don't know if they have where I had the most recent version um, with what I saw, but I mean, we can certainly request those numbers and then uh, pass them on to, to you guys and Jim. Yeah, it's always better to have more information. I'd be delighted to see that. And like I said, if nothing else, the projection aspect of it does kind of lend credence to us wanting to make some, some tweaks to things. Mm -hmm. Right. Well, Jim, what is that? Is that a, the Chapter 94 plan? Is that what that's called? Is that what the, the, yeah, the Chapter again? 94 report that they would have filed by March 31st of this year would have all the existing connections as well as any plan and tell you what's le what's left over. Okay. I do know there's a development going in in Wilmersdorf next to the M&T Bank that's on the Tower Health. 
complex that's going to be buying you used too. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the only other thing to mention is uh, Sue did a, a very nice uh, set of tweaks and rewrites on the on lot management letter. Uh, I am getting the final graphics put in. We're going to do rather than a single side, we're going to do a double side so that I can make the map really, really big on the back. Uh, I've just been trying to get time on my wife's computer with Photoshop to be able to do it. Uh, unfortunately, because of COVID, I tend to work during the day while she watches the kids and then she works at night. So there's almost almost no time where I have uh, unfettered access to the, the piece of equipment that would let me do it. Um, so I'll, I'll try to get that together maybe one of these weekends uh, when opportunity strikes. The, the nice thing about this is the way the ordinance is written, we have a little bit of latitude to extend for the first year, really for anybody that, that may have missed the boat on that. Uh, it's actually included directly in the ordinance that uh, if you waited a little bit, then it's not a, not a huge deal. And if you've actually pumped out leading up to that, that if you present a uh, receipt of you getting it pumped out, we're actually at our discretion uh, permitted to allow you to go into the next cycle potentially for, for the pump out. So uh, it's not as time sensitive as, uh, sensitive as it may seem on its surface, uh, but I do want to try to, to get that done, and that's a largely uh, me objective more than anybody else. Uh, but Sue, again, I thank you for your assistance on that because uh, I was wrestling with some of the, the wording on that to get that right, and you did a, a very nice job on, on smoothing that over. You're welcome. Okay, any questions, Jim or Irene, around anything Act 537? No, it's amazing how quickly circumstances can change, and you need to have a good communication and better plan in place in order to achieve the goals that they want you to achieve. Yeah, I, I think just to that, to echo that point, we need to have a, a little more versatile of a plan in yeah. place. Yeah. yeah. But, okay. At that point, that concludes the agenda items for tonight. So we'll move into the comments. Uh, I have only a brief set of comments and uh, I apologize. So I, did, I don't know, did the police report make it in there? Was that in the, the packet? It should be on the second email. Okay. Once again, near, if, I, if I can find the, it. Near the end. If I can find it, I will, I will read it out. Otherwise, I will recap it next month. Um, while I'm looking for that, uh, we have had some, some problems with street signs getting stolen recently. Uh, there were a number of suggestions that Sue saw on the PSATS message boards. Uh, we're not alone in this. There's been a, an uptick in vandalism and street sign thefts lately in other municipalities as well. Uh, some places suggested greasing the poles, which is pretty funny. Um, but uh, you have the unintended consequence that a lot of the grease is pretty nasty stuff and will stain pretty badly. So my immediate concern is the collateral damage of maybe somebody that's out walking or jogging or something like that and, and touching the pole or brushing against the pole. Um, don't necessarily want to go that route. Uh, there are some security hardware and bolts and things that we could get that would make it tremendously more difficult for somebody to steal signage. Um, one of the other suggestions was to flatten the threads on the bolts after they're installed, which keeps people from stealing it, but it also makes it impossible for us to uh, do anything in terms of maintenance or replacing of the signs without having to get really involved with uh, saws and things like that. So uh, if we continue to see a, a rash of this, I think our next step really should be, and I don't know that we need a, a motion outside of this, because this is regular road-related maintenance, would be to get the security hardware, the, the specialized bolts, so that it's a, a lot harder for people to, to take that stuff. Um, Additionally, the front tire on the John Deere went flat and we had to get it patched. Uh, the tires are in not great shape. And uh, after talking it over with Butch, we really should replace the front two tires before we go into the winter season, especially because we have started plowing with that, uh, that piece of equipment. Um, he was kind enough to get four estimates from various places. Uh, there was one from Zimmerman Farm Services, one from Binkley and Hurst, one from Custom Exhaust and one from Kepley's Tire. Kepley's Tire uh, came in actually the cheapest and uh, included mounting. The other places did not include mounting and were more expensive than Kepley's. So 
I would actually make a motion to uh, have Kepley's tire replace the two front tires on the John Deere tractor for a total cost of uh, three hundred and sixty dollars plus tax. It's three hundred and sixty dollars each tire. Oh, each tire. Okay. Yeah. That's still three hundred and sixty dollars each tire plus tax. Uh, for the record, all the other places were the same. The same quoting. I. You just did not read that out correctly. Second. Was that Jim? Yes. yes, it was Jim. Okay. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Uh, last item that I have for comment is Spur Road. Uh, work has resumed with Tulpahawken Township. Butch and I went out on Tuesday night and reviewed some of the items that uh, still need to be addressed. One of the things that Tulpahawken has asked for our assistance with, uh, in addition to using some of the, the road crew labor and the dump truck, is getting uh, contacts with the adjacent property owners and potentially one or two easements. Um, of the things that we had agreed to ahead of time, uh, the memorandum of, of understanding outlined us uh, covering the surveying work, 80 hours worth of labor, uh, the permits around the erosion and sediment plans, as well as the wetland delineation plans, the use of the dump, dump truck, and 30% of the, the overall project cost. Um, the easements were not specifically spelled out in that, but um, if you read between the lines, the any costs that we incur around assisting with the easements could certainly be contributed towards that 30%. So, uh, I don't know that we necessarily need a motion right this second because uh, there's a lot of prep work that has to be done around that unless we want to pre-authorize Andy to prepare the necessary easements after I get the information to make contact with the homeowners. Uh, but in the effort of uh, working together with Tulpahawken to get that done, um, I, I think we should we should do it. Yeah, I mean, I, I think just for, from a time perspective, it would make sense to authorize me to do that now. Okay, well, in that case, I'll, I'll make a motion to allow Andy to prepare any of the necessary easements for the Spur Road project. Second that. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay, and I was able to pull up the police report while I was going through the other comments. Uh, looks like a relatively standard month. There was actually, uh, I think, a slightly higher than normal rate of the EMS fire advisories. There were 17 last month, uh, as well as five traffic stops and eight citations issued. So a uh, bit higher than normal there, although I think in the past couple of months it's it's been elevated as well uh, for the, the traffic stops and the citations specifically. Uh, everything else was, was pretty straightforward, possibly even lower than normal. We had no DUIs, no misdemeanors, no court appearances. Uh, we actually, we had less motorist assist. There was only one motor assist, motorist assist call out that they answered. Um, so relatively quiet other than the, the, the traffic stops and citations. Um, Irene, do you have anything that you'd like to go over? Yeah, on that note, um, I guess uh, Chief Kirshner had left a message at the office about a stop sign being uh, destroyed during a uh, motor vehicle crash. Uh, okay. Sue, I can't just remember offhand. He asked about uh, the stop sign. The hundred. So, um, so he wants us to give him a bill so he can submit that to the insurance company of the person who ran it over. Okay. Do um, we know? Was the hardware destroyed too, or just the everything? Site? The pole everything? was down, everything. And he said normally his Topahawken charges one hundred fifty dollars, but he was he said that's up to us what we want to charge. Okay, I will email MSI tomorrow and get a cost for replacement for a stop sign, a pole, and the the base to go in the ground. Get a written quote, and I'll get that over to you. I can one now. I guess on the uh, other note of signage, I know we had talked about there's uh, some dumping going on right over William Penn Boulevard, right before Sheridan uh, uh, Road, the bridge there. If we could post a sign saying no dumping, and I guess whatever violation it would be. To have it clearly on that particular. So, as a, a follow up point to that, we don't necessarily need a no dumping ordinance because that's inherently legal at the state level, correct? Um, and I'd imagine the fines are probably prescribed 
also at the state level. So we would just have to potentially get a sign made that had that, that listed. Mm -hmm. um, I really, if, you, if you can find out what would need to be on the signage, I can also reach out to MSI and get that, that made. Um, MSI is loving us lately. Yeah, uh, Andy, for the placement of a sign like that, do we have to place it by ordinance? Like we no. would for like a hidden driveway sign or anything else? Uh, no, not that I'm aware of. Okay. Let me verify that. Though. Okay. Like I said, but, um, That'd be great. I don't, I don't think it takes any sort of ordinance for dumping. Yeah. I mean, I'm tired of seeing the dumping, and I think the guys are tired of picking up the bags. Yeah, I know we have the occasional problem with that on Canal, like where Canal comes off of 422. Mm -hmm. People frequently dump there. My concern about taking the time and effort to put up a sign is if somebody's going to dump illegally, they're probably not going to heed the fact that there's a sign saying, don't do this. Mm -hmm. but if nothing else, it lets people know that we notice. Yeah, yeah. Um, if I could continue then, is that okay? Yeah, absolutely, take it away. First of all, I'd like to say a big thank you to Dan. He's been a wonderful asset to helping me out in the office as far as the treasurer's uh, position is concerned. Wonderful having him there, and we've been doing a lot of work lately. Um, and as long as Dan is okay with it, that's part of one of the descriptions for the assistant uh, treasurer um, positions to do other work in the office. And as long as Sue's happy with that, if everyone's in agreement, um, you know, if Dan would like to be in the office a little bit more often doing some other work, that would be great. Let me, uh, let me actually un unmute Dan. That way he can, he can talk if he'd like to. There we go. Thank you. Thank you very much, Irene. <laughs> I look forward to working with you <laughs> folks. And uh, I spoke with Stu the other day and she told me, yeah, uh, I could use your help, how good you're back. So <laughs> it sounds like she's got a lot of projects for me. Sue so. will certainly keep you busy. Yeah. And we've got a budget coming up too. So only yeah, the second set of eyes. Yep. Good. No, it's, it's been a pleasure working with you, Irene. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Yeah, we have fun. We're, <laughs> and we're, learning, we're learning together. Absolutely, absolutely. It, it, it's just, it's been a, it's been a journey. But actually, we're both coming across new information and uh, getting things really caught up. I don't know if that's the correct word, but um, getting it to the point where anyone can step in, take a look, and understand what we've been doing. So yep. maybe transparency is a better term, um, and I'm happy to be there to do it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I can't thank you enough, Dan. Yeah, You're so welcome. Glad to have you on the team, Dan. Yeah. I guess the other issue uh, that you delineated here was Eagle Disposal Sloppy Service. Yeah, I think this week was a little bit better than last week, but I see trash bins uh, thrown into people's yards. Uh, someone threw, threw them onto someone's flowers, and I thought that was kind of sad. I understand the contract is up in uh, 2022, so that's something that we'll uh, have to revisit. I had a bunch of neighbors complain to me, so I just urged them to contact Eagle directly, if need be, give us a call in the office and we'll just keep on voicing our concerns. I think you said Rick is the regional manager, Sue, for um, Eagle no, he's, he's the, um, I guess he calls himself, they call him the route, the route manager. Route manager. He okay. around and, um, on our trash day, if, if I email them or call them and say, hey, somebody called and said their trash wasn't picked up, then he takes his little truck and okay. picks it so up. So anytime, you know, we keep on seeing very, very sloppy service. I mean, there was one week where they only seem to empty out half of everyone's uh, trash bins on Tulpy View Drive. So, I mean, that that was really ridiculous. Was really ridiculous. Almost every single Almost neighbor every said time. something to me They're like, hey, you know, our trash was out, trash was out in time. Then why is only half of our trash removed from our bins? So, um, you know, I said, just keep on calling over to the office, call Eagle, mm -hmm. voice mm -hmm. your concerns. That's all we can do at this point. So as a follow-up on that, one of the things that uh, Sue brought up at the workshop meeting is Eagle tendered the idea of providing bins, which was actually one of the things that we had looked at in the, the contract proposal and was prohibitively expensive. Mm -hmm. They were potentially offering to supply bins at no cost uh, simply because they'd be able to use the truck with the, the lifting mechanism uh, and they wouldn't have to have people manually moving the bins and things like that, which might eliminate it. It's seems like a good thing. The, the one thing that we would have to be cautious of is it does create a, a barrier for exit 
if we don't happen to go with Eagle the next time the contract renews because we would not keep those bins. They would they would revert back to Eagle. I know. I like having my own trash bin. Yeah, and so there's a certain charm to it yeah. too. Um, but it is something that they had brought up and something we should potentially consider. Even if we say no to it, we should still make the consideration. Yeah. And I did ask him to email something or send a letter, and we've not gotten anything in writing. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's... There's, there's never any robocalls about delays or anything. <clears throat> so, I mean, it's frustrating, you know, to get, you know, you walking down the street and you hear something from your neighbor and everyone's complaining to you. But so just please contact the office. Please call Eagle. And I've been telling you people, you know, tell your neighbor if they have an issue, they should call the office and that way we can document it too. Yeah. And sort of keep track of it. But. Okay. The, uh, the only other item that I forgot to, to put on there that I know was uh, something that came up was the community association has asked to resume yeah. meeting in the building. Um, based on what we, we kind of paced out and observed at the, the other meeting, I don't know if we're going to be able to allow that based on the, the social distancing requirements. You just can only fit so many people in that room at any one given time, uh, coupled with the fact that we wouldn't also be able to, to clean it effectively in the ways that we would need to do it. And above all else, the, the building is still technically closed to the public. We're not letting the AA meet there presently. We're not letting the Grange meet. Um, the offer for uh, the, the MTCA and Dan and Kelly, or excuse me, Don and Kelly are still on the call. If you guys want to meet via Zoom, I'm happy to help you do that, and we can we can use the the township Zoom account to do it. If that's the route you want to go, please just reach out to me. You both have my my phone number and know how to get a hold of me. Um, otherwise, I think for the time being, the the safest, most prudent thing is to not meet in person. Irene, Jim, what are what are your thoughts around the matter? I agree. If we let in one group, we have to let in all the groups, and we we just we don't have the budget to clean the building. We don't have materials to clean the building, etc. Yeah, not to mention we simply don't have the manpower. And yeah. uh, it, if nothing else, the individual groups may say, yes, we're willing to do that, but we don't have any way to assure that it's actually being done or being done effectively. Mm -hmm. So. Sorry to, to intrude there. You have anything else, Irene? No, thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Jim, <clears throat> do you have any comments? Well, I just want to let everybody know that the windows will probably be started in about six weeks. Um, Mike's remodeling is going to let us know a couple weeks beforehand so we can move some things out of the office. He has also uh, suggested that <laughs> he'll, Cleaning. Cover, he'll cover everything that we don't move with tarps because, uh, as Sue has told me, it's going to create a lot of dust. So... That's what he said. Yeah. Know that we, we hopefully will have these in before we get the first snow. Okay, so I'll come in the, in the next couple of weeks. I don't want to do it too far ahead of time, but uh, I'll move the computer equipment out into the, the main room and run a, a long cord so that you still have like the ability to get on the internet um, along with everything else. But I'll, I'll take care of that. Um, we just need to get a, a slightly tighter estimate on time from Mike's remodeling so that I don't move you out there and then have you sitting out there for like a month and a half. Well, he said, uh, he stopped in the office uh, last week, I guess it was, and he said he would call like two weeks before okay. he was going to start to let us know. And that's okay. when I asked him, like, do you think we should move everything? He said, oh, yeah, it's going to be very dusty. Yeah, I'd imagine he's going to be drilling into to masonry, mm -hmm. and that's, it's going to be very dusty. So mm -hmm. tarps are going to be a good thing, but everything that we can take out of there, if we have boxes of paperwork, Obviously, the computer systems, the modem, anything else, the copiers, the printer, uh, all of that stuff should get relocated temporarily. Is the power in the, uh, in the meeting room adequate to supply the computers and all the things that we normally plug in? Yeah, the, I wouldn't necessarily try to run the copy machine out there. That might be worthwhile to put over like in the, the, the other meeting room. Okay. But the desktops themselves are fairly low power. If okay. memory serves me for the one that I was replacing parts in that I need to bring back into the office building, it's maybe a 300-watt power supply. And yeah. for, for everybody that isn't well-versed in that, that may seem like a lot. That is not a lot for a computer power supply. Like, your, oh. your average laptop is close to that for, for power consumption. Um, 
So Can we get a second screen for the treasurer's computer? Yeah, yeah it's, I, don't, I don't think you have to worry about breaking the bank on that one. Um, I'll look around and, and try to get some, some pricing. Like I said, there's a couple of relatively inexpensive, rather nice 24-inch screens that I picked up personally. And they were, I think, somewhere between 100 and 150 bucks per screen. Um, we don't necessarily have to go that degree, but you go much lower than that and you start getting into the realm of you really do get what you pay for. Mm -hmm. um, so I'll, I'll see if I can get some some prices around. I think it's either a 23 or a 24 that's on there right now. Mm -hmm. That was the one that I brought in from home. Mm -hmm. um, that's uh, If we can get something similar, we'll just get something similar for as cheap as we can get it or I'll find prices around it and get it approved next month. Anything else, Jim? No. Okay, fantastic. Uh, Andy? I got nothing. Fantastic. Uh, let me unmute Jim McCarthy again. Jim, do you uh, have any comments? We're all good. We covered everything I had. Okay, very good. In that case, the last item is Sue. Do you have any comments? Um, just that I need everybody's response for the Brooks County... Association of Township Officials Convention. I need to know who is going because I need to do that next week. Okay. If I hear anything, I will let you know, but I would say at this point, whatever you get by the cutoff date, go with it. Okay. We'll do. Tell the last on the street. Okay. So the last thing to do is to motion to adjourn the meeting. The time is now 8.40 p.m., and I will make the motion. I'll second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. All right. Okay. Meeting adjourned. Thank you, Thank everyone. You. Thank you. Stay safe, and very nice to see everybody on the call. Same.